Hello, everyone. This is going to be a video walkthrough for question four on the exam prep discussion nine. And this question's name is psychodetection. So in this question, given an undirected graph, provide an algorithm that returns true if the cycle exists in the graph and false otherwise. Also, provide a theta bound for the worst case runtime for the algorithm. So in this walkthrough, we will first outline uh, the expected behavior of the, of the algorithm. Then we will go over the implementation of the algorithm. After that, I will walk through an example of the algorithm in action. And last but not least, I will do a runtime analysis of this algorithm. And so let's get started. Let's first by starting to understand the behavior of the algorithm. So let's name this algorithm cycle exist. And cycle exist takes in the input G, which is an undirected graph with a set of vertices V and a set of edges E. And the output of this algorithm is true if G has cycles, um, has at least one cycle, or at least any cycle exists, it will return true. And false if G does not have cycles. OK, so that is the behavior of the algorithm. right? You can imagine this algorithm as a black box. And we know the inputs. We know the outputs. Now, what we're trying to do is explain what's actually inside this black box. Right. So let's do it. Here's the algorithm main idea. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to basically run a modified version of depth, depth first search. And in this depth first search modified version, um, if we've identified a cycle, then we return true. And we know that we found a cycle when we visit a node that we have visited already. All right, so that leaves us to the question, how do we check or how do we know if we visited a node already? All right. And recall the DFS demo in lecture 22. And so what we can do is we can use a Boolean array to represent the nodes that we visited already. So here is an example of how that will look. All right here is an array named visited that maps the label to basically a true or false value, a Boolean value. Have we visited the node or not? So while looking through a node's neighbors, if we find a node i where visited i is equal to true, then that means we have found a cycle. Well, hold on, hold on. Unfortunately, we are not done yet. This would work perfectly for an uh, undirected graph. But unfortunately, this problem, we're dealing with a directed, oh my gosh. I meant it would work perfectly for a directed graph. But unfortunately, in this problem, we have a graph that is undirected, right? And so if a graph is undirected, that means that the neighbor relationship actually goes both ways. We can go from zero to one, and we can also go from one to zero. So in this example, zero is a neighbor of one, while one is also a neighbor of zero. And so this causes an issue, right, if we, for our algorithm, because if we visit one after we vi visit zero, our algorithm will claim that there is a cycle because zero is actually a visited neighbor of one, right? We've already visited zero, and now, we're visiting one. And when we're visiting one, we now check back at zero because zero is one of the neighbors of one. And this array will tell us that we have already visited zero. Therefore, we're visiting it, we're trying to visit a node that we visited already. Therefore, our algorithm would actually tell us, hey, this is a cycle when it's not. So, how do we address this problem? Right? When we visit the neighbors of one, we ignore zero, right? The node we we, we took in order to get to one. How do we you know, represent this with a data structure? We wanna use a map to map each node to the node we took to get there, right? So here's an example. Um, let's say we have this graph right here. And when we're running this algorithm, DFS modified on zero, um, we keep track of how we got to every single node, right? So. Um, Let's say if we're running, starting it on zero, we use negative one to represent, hey, we started on um, node zero. 
And so we got to node one from node zero and we got to node two from node one. We got to node three from node one, right? So this, that first search would go like this. We start here, now we go to one and then now we can go to two or three, but we break, break ties by picking three, uh, by picking two because you know two is before three uh, numerically, right? And then next we come back here and then now we visit three, right? So by having this information, this allows us to kind of, um, this allows us to check if, to, to, this allows us to ignore when we're looking at a node that we took to get to the current node, right? So, okay, let's now go into running the algorithm, right? So let's say we run this modified DFS on node one and we break ties by numerical order. And so right here, this is, uh, this is where we store um, the Boolean array, which is right here. This is the Boolean array right here. This is um, how we map each node to the node that we took to get to that node. And so initially, all of our Boolean array is initialized as false in all of our um, edge two, which you know is the is is now initialized as null. Right. And so let's start by running DFS on one. And then so one is now true. And so um, this edge two we keep at is null because since this is a start, right? And oh yeah, we put this as negative one because this is a start. And then so now we go death first search, we go to two. And so now true two is now true. And we, we, we went from one to two, therefore for two, edge two, we put one. And now we um, use numerical order to break ties and now we go to three. And so when we go to three, we now change this to true and we went from two to three. So two goes here. And then next we go from three to five, right? So five is now visited and we you know went from three to five. Now that first search actually goes to two. And so now we actually check if we've already visited two, right? We have already visited two. Therefore, this graph has a cycle, right? Our algorithm identifies that, that this graph indeed has a cycle. And so we return true. Okay. Now let's go into a runtime analysis of this algorithm. So when doing a runtime analysis, there are two cases that could be the worst case. One is where there are no cycles. Another case is where there are cycles, but we do terminate early, right? So for the no cycle case, we don't have early termination. And the worst, the worst, the most amount of edges that a graph that has no cycles can have is v number is v minus one, the, one less than the number of vertices, and so that's why we have this equality right here, right? And so let's look at this example. We have one, two, three vertices, and we have one, two edges, right? And so remember, we ran a modified version of DFS, and the runtime of DFS is V plus E. And since we have this equality, we can plug in E into here, right? We can plug in E into here and which will result in theta V plus V minus one, which simplifies into two V, which simplifies into V. And so the runtime of a no cycle case is theta V. It can also be theta E, if we just, you know, change this equality around. And so we now have two possible solutions, one and two, theta V and theta E. And so now let's look at our second case, right? So in this case, where the cycles do terminate early, in order for there to be a cycle, there has to be at least as many edges as vertices, right? Which gives us this equality right here. However, on the vth edge we take, we are forced to visit a visited edge, right? Because every single edge you take, you're, you know, let's say you're visiting a new node, 
And on the Vth edge, that means you've already visited um, all the edges. If you take one more edge, the Vth edge, that means you will have to, you're forced to go back to one of the edges you visited already. And when we visit a Vth edge, and, and we visit it, a vertice that we visit already, that means there is a cycle, right? So therefore, ending early. And the runtime of that is theta V plus V. And because we visited V number of vertices and V number of edges, right? Therefore, the runtime simplifies into 2V, which simplifies into V. And so since theta V encompasses both the no cycle case and the cycles case, therefore, it's safe for us to use theta V to represent the worst case of this algorithm. And that's it for this problem. Thanks for tuning in.